right, welcome back to your favorite uh, pre-calc class. We're going to take a look at exponential growth and decay, Newton's law of cooling. And so here's our model for exponential growth or decay, um, where a, a sub zero is the original or initial population. K is our growth or decay constant. T is the time. And A of T is the, um, like the amount after time T, right? So let's take a look. Uh, let's do an example here where at the start of this experiment, we have 125 cells. So that's the initial amount, the original population. Three hours later, so T is three, there are 235 cells. So that's, this is our A of three. That's the amount after three hours. It's 235, right? So let's go ahead and um, punch that into the formula. And let's put our information in so that we can solve for the growth rate here, the K. Okay, so we're going to use this. So after three hours, we had 235 cells. The initial amount was 125. And this is after three hours. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for K here is what we're going to do. So we go ahead and divide both sides by 125. So we have 235 divided by 125 is 1.88 equals e to the 3k. And I'm going to write that as e to the 3k equals 1.88. Now let's undo e. If you remember to undo e, we use its inverse, the natural log. Take the natural log of both sides. ln of e to the 3k is 3k. So we get ln of 1.88, and then we're going to go ahead and divide that all by 3. Divide by th the whole thing by 3. So k is uh, one-third the natural log of 1.88, or ln of 1.88, all divided by 3. Now, if you, so that's our growth uh, rate. So the ln, let's see, ln of 1.88 is uh, 0.631, I'm gonna divide that by three. So this is 0.2104239256. That's what your K is, okay? So now the nice thing is <clears throat> we can, now that we have our growth rate K, um, ideally, you use it in exact form, but if you use it, I like to use it at least to six digits. Try not to, but ideally you're not rounding it off at all. You're not cutting it off. Otherwise you'll have rounding error. So I would say to be safe, take it out to at least six digits or so, four at the worst kind of deal. But we can find the, um, how many cells are present after five hours. Since we started with 125, we know our K now, which is one-third ln of 1.88. And we're solving this for time, or I'm sorry, we're doing it for five hours. So I'm going to take that one-third ln of 1.88. Yeah, let's punch it in the decimals here. So we have 125 times e to the uh, one-third ln of 1.88. This is all being multiplied by uh, 5. And we get 357.964. Gosh, I'm sorry. What am I doing? So let me hit that.
So we'll round that to 350, the nearest cell, 358 cells is how many we have after five hours, this model, okay? So then question C, well, how long will it take for the population to reach? Um, 442 cells, how long? So we want 442 cells. Started with 125. Our K was, uh, what was that? One third LN, uh, 1.88. And we're solving for T, right? And so what we'll do here to solve for how long it takes, how time, how many hours, Go ahead and divide by, we'll isolate the E. So let's divide by 125 on both sides first. So we have 442 divided by 125 gives us 3.536. Now I'll undo E with LN. So I have ln of e to the one-third, and I'm going to write that over here, one-third ln of 1.88 t, and then I have ln of 3.536, okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 3, so 3 times that. So I have uh, ln of 1.88, again, that's just a number, times t equals 3 times the natural log of 3.536 and that gives me um, 3.788898434 and I'm going to divide both sides by ln of 1.88 and we get t is 6.00215084. So approximately we'll round to the nearest hour, six hours. All right, how about this next one? At the start of the experiment, there's a thousand bacteria. So here's our exponential growth formula, a sub zero e to the kt. So there's a thousand bacteria at the beginning. There's our a sub zero. After four hours, after four hours, the population doubled, so we ended up with 2,000. Okay, what's the exponential growth formula? Well, we don't know our, our growth, how fast it grows, our constant K, our growth factor, but we do know this happened after four hours, so e to the 4K. So let's go ahead and solve for our growth factor, K. So we'll divide both sides by 1,000. And so we have uh, 2 equals e to the 4k, e to the 4k equals 2. So let's undo e with the natural log. So we've got 4k equals the natural log of 2. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So I have 1 fourth the natural log of 2. That's what our k is. Uh, 1 fourth. Um, times the natural log of 2, which is uh, one or point one seven three two eight six seven nine five one blah 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 keeps going. Okay. All right. How many bacteria are present after six hours? Okay. Well, let's go ahead and write this now that we know our growth factor. <clears throat> we started with a thousand. Our K is, I'm going to use 1 fourth ln of T, 1 fourth ln of 2, I'm sorry. And we're trying to find how many are present after 6 hours. So let's plug 6 in for T, so times 6. Okay, so we've got 1,000 1, E to the, and I'll, I'll go ahead and punch that all in. You can also write that as uh, the 6 can be multiplied by the 1 fourth in front. So 6 fourths or 3 halves ln of 2. Another way to write that. And let's punch that into our decimals. Let's see what we get.
So 28, 27, 0.4, And uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's it uh, exactly. We'll round it to the nearest. Um, cell here, so 28, 28. Now, by the way, if you would have cut off K, like let's say you rounded this to four digits, 0.1733, you would have actually ended up with, and this is due to, again, you'd have rounding error on this. So if this number was 0.1733, then what you'd have is a thousand times that E to the Point one seven three three times six, and this will end up being it, it would end up being twenty eight twenty eight point six five. You see how that rounds up to twenty eight twenty nine. So that's what I'm talking about with rounding error. So ideally, you keep it in exact form. You don't have to, but I would take it out. Um, um, your homework problems are allowing a little bit of um, leeway with that, so it'll allow for a little bit of rounding error. So you'd, you'd be safe with four digits, but uh, again, ideally I'd take it to six or more, okay? Let's go ahead and complete this uh, table here. Um, so this scenario, we have a population in the year 2000 that's 53.4 million and a growth rate of 0.0108, right? So if I use, this is my year 2000 is year zero, so a of t equals a sub zero e to the kt. Um, we start out with 53.4. We'll do this in millions. e to the, the projected growth rate. Here's our k, 0.0108 t. Right. So here's our formula. Okay, we have our our formula here to project in the year 2011. Well, 2011 is 11 years since the year 2000. So if we just punch in 11, we'll have our answer in millions. I'm going to go uh, e to the 0 0.0108 times 11. That gives me 1.126, and then I'll multiply that by 53.4. And so I get 60.1361252.1. And that is in the year 2011. This is in millions. All right, so this is, in other words, um, 60.1 million, right? Or sixty million one hundred thirty-six thousand one hundred twenty-five, right? If you want to do it that way. All right, now we're going to take a look at decay problems. Okay, so exponential decay. Um, <clears throat> so for this first one here, you have a half life, and and you can use this if you want to. I don't like to use do it this way. I'm actually going to uh, show you a different way when they give you the half life. For these problems here, let me go ahead and write. Here's our exponential growth or decay formula. And when they say the half-life of strontium-90 is 28 years, that means you, at, after 28 years, you have half the original amount. You have half the original amount after 28 years. So I put 28 in for T. A of t is half the amount. Notice when I divide both sides by a sub 0, I'm done with a sub 0. That's gone. So what I have is half the amount, e to the 28k. I take the natural log of both sides, ln, ln. So I have ln of 1 half equals 28k. And let me write that as 28k equals ln of 1 half. And you remember the quotient formula, that's ln of 1 minus the ln of 2. Well, ln of 1 is 0, right? So that's 28k equals 0 minus ln of 2 divided by 28. 
So there's our k, negative ln of 2 over 28. So that's where this comes in. So k will end up being negative ln of 2 over how many years you have. So that's the why that half-life, you got the 28 on the bottom there. Okay. But I'm kind of old school. I'm going to probably do that each time. Um, but that's the decay uh, rate, right? And and so now we can go ahead and and write the the formula for that. So here's our a of t equals a sub zero e to the k t, right? Um, oh, let me hold on. I'm still on part a here. A of t equals a sub zero e to the k t. What's the decay function? If the initial sample is 10 grams, so I put the 10 in. So I got, um, there's our function. So a of t equals 10 e to the negative ln of 2 over 28 times t. Okay. So after 11 years, we just punch in 11, right? After 11 years. that in. So approximately 7.62 grams around at the nearest hundredth there. Do another one. The half-life of radium 226 is 1620 years. How much of a two gram sample is left after a thousand years? So let's do let's find the decay rate here. So you have half the amount of uh, radium 226 after 16, 16, 20 years. You have half the amount. Divide both sides by a sub zero, so you have a half equals e to the 16, 20 k. Take the natural log of both sides, that's the ln of one minus the ln of two, 16, 20 k. ln of one is zero, so you have negative ln of two equals 16, 20 k. Divide both sides by 1620. There's our decay rate. Okay. <clears throat> so now we have how much is left if I start with a 2 gram sample. If I start with a 2 gram sample, now I know my decay rate of this uh, radium 226. It's negative ln of 2 over 1620. How much of this will be left after a thousand years? So let's punch this in. What was it a thousand years, I think? So we get 1.30, oh, 303.794. I punched that in, right? That's 1620. Yeah. So approximately 1.3. One grams after a thousand years.
All right, some other types of decay problems is uh, Newton's law of cooling. So this has a different formula here for Newton's law of cooling. Um, and, and I have here written, you know, U of T is our final temperature. This is our initial temperature. Uh, capital T is the temperature of the surrounding medium, and K is the cooling constant, and T, of course, is time. Okay, so let's do this first example with our formula. A pizza is removed from the oven has a temperature of 450 degrees. Okay, that's our that's our U sub zero is 450. Okay. It's so left sitting in a room that has a temperature of 70. 70 is the surrounding medium. So eventually that pizza is going to be 70 degrees. But that's our capital T here. Um, <clears throat> after five minutes, the temperature of the pizza is 300. After five minutes, so T is five. After five minutes, it's 300. Okay, so now we can solve for our cooling constant. Okay, our, our, our lowercase k here. And then we'll figure out what the temperature of the pizza is after 20 minutes, all right? So let's go ahead and subtract 70 both sides. And so we have uh, 230 equals 450 minus 70. What's that? 380 e to the 5k. Divide by 380, divide by 380. So we've got um, 23 over 38 equals e to the 5k. And take the natural log on both sides. So 5k equals the ln of 23 over 38. And then I'll take divide that by 5. So 1 -fifth the ln of 23 over 38 and there's our decay rate okay now what's the temperature of the pizza after 20 minutes well u of t equals we start at 70 degrees or i'm sorry the the surrounding medium the, the room temperature is 70 degrees the pizza comes out at 450 degrees and then um our K is one fifth ln of 23 over 38. And then time T. So 20 minutes later. So we've got to punch a 20 minutes in. Times 20 here. Times 20. Okay. So let's punch that in. I got the. Seventy plus three eighty, and what was the rest of that? One fifth ln twenty three over Guess after 20 minutes, if I remember right. So that'll be 120.997. So the temperature after 20 minutes. So approximately, temperature of the pizza is approximately 121 degrees. Fahrenheit after 20 minutes, right? And then the second question, um, when will the temperature of the pizza be 140 degrees? So when will the temperature of the pizza, so when will it be 140?
So let's subtract 70 both sides. So I have 70 equals 380e to that number times t. Divide by 380, divide by 380. And so I've got uh, 7 over 38. Let me write it this way. e to the k. T equals 7 over 38. Okay, now I'm going to take the natural log on both sides. Again, if you want to punch in 1 5th ln of 23 over 38 and have that decimal, just make sure you have it at least out to six digits. So this will undo it. So I have ln or 1 5th ln 23 over 38. T equals ln 7 over 38. Okay, so I just got to divide by this number right here. And so T will end up being, let's punch that in. LN of 738 divided by 1 by fifth the LN of, I can't remember now, what was that? 23 over 38. So it looks like 16.846 minutes. So about 17 minutes, right? rounding to the nearest minute. All right, one more here. We got a thermometer reading 72 degrees placed in a refrigerator where the temperature is a constant 38. Okay, so again, let's use our uh, U of T. Let's start filling out what we have here. Capital T, that's the temperature of the surrounding medium. Uh, that's the initial temperature. K is our cooling rate, constant, cooling constant, time and T is time, okay? All right, a thermometer reading 72 degrees. That's, so that's the initial, it says 72, U sub zero. Placed in a refrigerator where the temperature is a constant 38. So it'll eventually be 38, that's our capital T. It'll eventually show 38. But uh, then tells us, but after two minutes it reads, after two minutes, it reads 60, it gets down to 60, from 72 down to 60 in two minutes. So let's solve for our cooling rate here. Well, 72 minus 38 is 34. Let me subtract 38 on both sides first. So 22 equals 72 minus 38 is 34 e to the 2k. Divide both sides by 34, and we've got, what's that, 11 over 17 equals e to the 2k. Now I take the ln of both sides, so I have 2k, ln of e to the 2k is just 2k, equals the ln of 11 17ths. Take half of that to divide by 2. There's our uh, cooling constant, right, which is... Uh, let's see, what is ln 11 17 by 2? So about negative point, this is negative point 217659 but I would at least take it to that k right there. Now the question is, uh, how what will it read after 7 minutes then? After 7 minutes. Well, let's see here. It starts... Uh, the, the refrigerator is 38 degrees. It'll eventually be 38 degrees. Starts at 72. Now I have my K, 1 half LN of 11 17 and I'm solving for T. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. I am plugging in 7. There we go. Well, let's put that all in. Let's see what we get.
times seven. Let's see here. This does not want me to do this. There we go. So 45.409. So about 45.41. is what it will be after seven minutes right that'll be the reading and then last question how long will it take how long will it take before a thermometer reads 39 i want my u of t to be 39 um start at 72 i have one half ln of 11 17ths solving for time t right and let me go ahead and right off the bat, let's subtract 38 on both sides. So I have 1 equals, uh, the 72 minus 38 was the 34. Now I'm going to divide by 34 on both sides. Now I'm going to take the ln of both sides. So I have ln of 1 minus the ln of 34. Remember, ln of 1 is 0. So this just ends up being negative ln of 34. I'm just going to write that. This is the same thing. And over here, I have 1 half ln of 11 17 t. So I just got to divide both sides by that 1 half ln of 11 17 and I'll have my t. So... That in. Sixteen point two minutes looks like. Oops, what did I do? There we go. 16.2. All right, lastly with uh, logistic growth models. So here, I've got a little, if you had a petri dish of bacteria inside, the bacteria will grow exponentially, but not forever. This all food uh, is used up, the growth will level off. So logistic growth model best describes this, right? Can you see how this thing kind of tapers off, right? As, as time T goes on there. So with our logistic growth models, A, B, and C are constants. The C value indicates the growth uh, will level off as C. In other words, you've got this kind of limiting factor, if you will, of Y equals C there. That's your horizontal asymptote. And uh, A and B, the term containing a and b will go to zero as t approaches infinity as t goes gets exponentially large right and the b term is the growth rate b term is the growth rate all right let's take a look here let's do an example of this population of canada a million since uh, january 1st 1900 can be approximated with this logistic growth model t is the number of years since january 1st 1900 so evaluate p of zero so p of zero Again, T is the number of years since 1900. So T being zero, that is the year 1900. So let's just plug it in. Let's see, we get 55.1 divided by 1 plus 9.6e to the negative 0 0.02515 times zero. Let's plus, plus that in. Let's see what we get. this times zero looks like maybe this is making me put this in parentheses here times zero right so that'll be e to the zero which is one so it'll really just be on the bottom you'll just have one plus nine point six times one so you have ten point six on the bottom right this is just fifty five point one 
divided by 10.6. So, anyways, this means that let's say that 5.198, approximately 5.2. So this means on January 1st, 1900, Canadian population was, remember this is in millions, 5.2 million approximately, right? Well, what's the growth rate? The growth rate, well, that's the B value. If you remember up here, right here, that's the little B right there, negative B. So the B follows the negative there. So in this case, 0 0.02515, that's our B. So our growth rate is 2.515%. Right, change that to a uh, percent there. Okay. All right, now let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and use the function to approximate the Canadian population January 1st, 2015, and round to the nearest tenth of a million. Well, uh, the year January 1st, 2015, remember T being zero was the year 1900, January 1st, 1900. So what we're going to have to punch in is 115 for T. So P of 115, so we had a 55.1 divided by uh, 1 plus 9.6 E to the negative 0 0.02515 was and then times our t time. Well, in this case, our t time is 115. All right, so that's what we're punching in. Let's see what we get here. So it's all the same stuff except t is not zero. Time is 115. And it looks like we get uh, 35.958, approximately 36. So um, approximately 36, remember this is million. And by the way, I was rounding the nearest tenth here, but that bumps it up, right? So I'll bump that up, 36 there. So 36 million was the Canadian population on January 1st, 2015, 115 years after. Okay, and finally, um, during which year would the Canadian population reach 45? We want it to reach 45. So we got 55.1. So how many years would this take? 1 plus 9.6 e to the negative 0.02515t. We're solving for time t. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by this 1 plus 9.6 e to the blah blah t. Okay, and so we'll have, so that'll cancel right there. So we'll have 45 times 1 plus 9.6 e to the negative 0.02515t equals 55.1. Now I'm going to distribute that. So I'll have 45 plus, let's see if that is 45.9.6 gives me 432 e to the negative 0.02515t. Now I'm going to subtract 45 both sides. So I have 432e to the negative 0.02515t equals uh, 55.1 minus the 45 gives us a 10.1. Now I'm going to divide by 432 both sides. And so I have e to the negative 0.02515t equals 10.1 divided by 432. 
And so then I've got this, uh, so I've got to undo the E at this point. So I want to take the natural log of both sides. And so I got negative 0.02515t equals the ln of 10.1 divided by 432. And the last thing, I just got to divide by this uh, negative 0.02515. So T will end up being, let's punch that in. But, uh, LN of Looks like I got uh, 149.339. So approximately 149 years, right? From, but remember, this is 149 years from the year 1900. So 1900 plus 149 is the year 2049. It's not until the year 2049 that the uh, population, Canadian population, according to this logistic growth model, will reach 45 million. Well, thanks so much for watching. See you next time.